Plumbers, and welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. I'm Sean. I'm Janice. And welcome to our spoiler review, episode five of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, called Truth. Truth. And they laid down some truth. And they laid down... I was just going to ask, like, whose truth is it in this episode? But A lot of people. It's everybody's truth. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we're spoilers, so there's going to be a ton of discussion. We sometimes go in order. We sometimes don't. Whatever. Uh, you've been warned. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, I want to start with the opening scene. Yeah. Because we get John Walker versus Bucky versus, and Sam. Right. And Buck, uh, John's on the run from what he did in the previous episode, killing the guy in front of everybody and everything. Yeah. And um, uh, he finally gets to a stockyard or... Factory. Factory, factory or something factory like that, whatever. Yeah. Um, and he has a moment where he actually gets the chance to breathe and starts to come to terms, um, start to realize that Lamar is gone. Yes. And I feel like he's <clears throat> also kind of um, formulating the truth as he believes it. Yes. In his, in his mind yes. so that he can continue to repeat that truth as he believes it to yes, everyone else. Which is something that happens later when he goes and sees <laughs> Lamar's parents. Lamar's parents. Yeah. He told everybody, I killed the guy that killed Lamar. Right. And we all, we as the audience know, know that that's not true. Right. Well, and Bucky, was it Bucky or Sam said to him, no, you didn't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When they, when they first go to confront uh, confront him, him. Yeah, yeah that was the word and ask for the shield back yeah uh they asked nicely they did say please uh <laughs> but um john is so far gone down the road that that he he can't decipher in his own head the what is actually the truth his truth and what is right right yeah. now yeah and and it continues on later when he um gets dis discharged and no pension no nothing whatever from the u.s military and him just sitting there saying you made me you made me this and this kind of thing he he can't he can't grasp that his actions are the what is actually is how he got here right and, and he's not wrong but right you know you have to go back to and and they they said this lamar said this to him uh, in the last episode, the serum makes you a, a more, bigger version of a, yourself. A more, a more or, version of yourself. More or, of yeah, yourself. Yeah. Well, Steve, you know, go go back to the original movie. Steve was this, you know, puny little guy that had been picked on all his life, but always stood up to, you know, to the people that were picking yep. on him and yep. um, just wanted to do the right thing. And... You know, so that's why it worked with him, but it's definitely not going to work with with the majority with of majority people. people. That take this. And it also, um, spe specifically with John Walker, it's not going to work because he was already feeling the effects of being Captain America before he even took the serum. Right. If you go back and watch the previous episodes, he's twitching and flinching, and yeah, and already like in that we kind of talked about it last week that kind of roid rage kind of thing anyways. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then he takes the serum. He was already off the rate, hanging on by a thread. He wasn't yeah. off the rails yet. He yeah. was hanging on by a thread. Yeah. And then he took the serum last week. And so we get this, him trying to deal with all of that. And his brain is just, his brain is beyond fixing with the serum. Right. right at this point. Right. In time. But we get this epic fight and about halfway through the fight, uh, I turned to Janice and I said, this seems very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Bucky was in the last one where there was a three-way fight and they were trying to do something. And it, it more often than not, it was Bucky and John going at each other. And Sam would jump in in the Falcon suit, but he was obviously outmatched whenever he tried to do stuff right because he has not taken the he serum. has not taken the serum which i think is going to be something that is addressed further down the road but uh, but but for this particular fight it became very obvious that um sam was outmatched when right. it came to going to well i think John. that that um 
is what the training montage is all about. I think the training montage was, yes, was very much. Because he is not, he does not want to take the serum. He believes he can do it his way. His way, right, right. Because... And he's seen what happened to Isaiah. So that's even right. more of a reason why right. he wouldn't want to take it. And he's serum. seen what's going on with John. He sees what's going on with the flag smashers. He, he's heard the stories from Steve about the Red Skull. Like, yeah. like all of this stuff makes him super hesitant about taking the serum. Right. And right. so I, I appreciate that that's the story process that we're doing with sam and right. I, and i and, and the the training montage really that we get later in the episode really brings that home like yeah. he did does everything with the shield that steve does but he had to train himself to get to that point right well and and uh he tells bucky right before that when they're um on the boat when they're working on the boat together yeah yeah, yeah. uh he tells him because him and Bucky are having the conversation about, you know, Bucky wants to get better. He wants to get over having these uh, nightmares and, and right, you know, right, right. He, he's not programmed anymore, but he's still dealing with the ramifications of right. all the things that he did in his brain. And he told him, you have to put in the work. Right. Which is, yeah. So now he's putting, putting in, in the, the work, work. Yeah, yeah to do it the right way especially not... after his uh we've gotten way off from the fight but i we told you <laughs> we're gonna go all over the place but especially after he had the conversation with the sister about like he he said I, every time i saw you look at me you i knew that you knew i was or you knew that or you I thought saw in your eyes I, that uh, i was leaving i was running away yeah running away. and yeah. i wasn't and, and she's like i didn't think you were running away you're trying to do a fight out there and then you came home and picked the fight here. Yeah. And you're trying to do both. And and it's it, it's a it makes a big it makes a better man out of you that you ch you chose to pick both fights yeah. instead of just being Yeah. The, and so uh but the fight itself is just well done, well well choreographed, well lit. It's dark, but you see all the motion and everything yep. and I thought it was just really well done. They finally have to break John's arm to get the shield off. Right. And uh, and to be fair, he broke Bucky's. So right, <laughs> right. Um, he but broke Bucky's. Arm. Right, it was zapping and well, whatever. <laughs> um, but f at the end of the fight, Sam's on the ground, John's unconscious, and the shield's on the ground, and it's it's still bloody from from the death from the previous episode. And Bucky walks over and picks it up and holds it. And they do this wide shot of him standing in this warehouse over two bodies. Mm -hmm. But the sun is pouring down on him and the shield's facing the camera. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah. It's just an amazing, like, period shot, whatever. Yeah. And then he drops the shield at Sam. Yep. Like, this is yours. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, stop giving it, it away. <laughs> yeah, stop it. And then walks away. And and so that kind of... And, and then we go to the title card. So all yeah. of that happened. Yeah. All the big fight and everything. And dealing with John and John dealing with his emotions. All happened before the title card happened. Yep, yep. Um, We get a montage of them arresting the GRC. I didn't know they had police authority. Um it said... Policia on the when they pulled up in the truck that John right, got but it was of. GRC specifically, yeah, who was pulling refugees out of camps, and for for yeah. being assistance assisting the yeah. flag smashers. Yeah. So, I I now see them as a police force, and they're not a they should not be a police force. Is what I'm trying to get to. Right, which is kind of the whole that commercial where, you know, we're just the red cross or right. you know uh unicef or whatever right. but they're not they're like the ss combined with the red cross right right the red cross for everybody to see but on the back end they're the we ss got, we got this <laughs> we got this rights to arrest and take people and do things and yeah and the figurehead of that particular group was john walker's captain america right. and i was like so it was it was very interesting that they made a point of saying like they're they're pretty much emptying, emptying all of these um, refugee camps, which leads to the conversation later about the GRC getting rid of the, I can't remember what the, 
what the border thing that was. It was called the 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 act, the actual right. Sokovia Accords. That's not what it is, but right. that, the actual act. I don't remember what it's called. But they're voting to get rid of that, right? Like the Immigration Act, or Immigration whatever. Act, yeah. Yeah, right? So and then and making twenty million people worldwide go back to their home countries, right. where they don't have anything, and that's right. what the flag smashers are fighting against because is... they gave their homes to somebody else, right? Which doesn't necessarily make sense to me um they haven't really delved into it and i think we've kind of talked about this before that we were interested in some of the ramifications of everybody just suddenly coming back and and i get it like we've talked about before you know you you know you're with somebody they get snapped five years later they come back but you've moved on and now you have two husbands or two wives or whatever um but like in um is it end game when um ant-man comes back and he's walking down the streets of san francisco there's a ton of houses that are boarded up empty and and the trash piled up outside and stuff so there was enough homes generally yeah but there's also like those people who were on vacation in the uk who live in the states and those people who but what does that have to do with you not having a home when you well but you're but when you get back when you got snapped back to reality yeah you come back to where you were and so you came back and now you're in the uk and now they have to put you in a refugee camp in the uk and why can't you just go home you could go home if you had the means all of your accounts and everything has been frozen and taken care of. And like, I again, this is something that hasn't been explained, but we're trying to figure it out on our own. If, if, if I'm gone for five years, all of my bank accounts get frozen and taken away. All of my IDs don't exist anymore because I've been ruled dead or gone. Yeah. So now I have to travel internationally. Yeah, but and, they can, I don't know. It just seems like a really weird way to deal with it instead of trying to figure out instead of trying to put everybody into and i can't imagine that it would be this many but because didn't they say it was like two hundred thousand people or something 20 million 20 million people world worldwide okay so 20 million people got snapped back to the country they didn't originally again this is something they haven't explained and so this so that's one of those things that i maybe is a story or point that they don't want to cover yet yeah maybe but it's also it's adding these questions like if we have these refugee camps and isn't it better to just spend the money that they would spend on the refugee camps getting these people home home? right or grc is a front right and they're actually going to turn all those people into super soldiers and super soldiers or they're going to turn them into um uh not martyrs, but like they're gonna, um, um, th- they're gonna they're gonna make them the 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 front line of whatever war the they're, they're it's this is a very Hydra move. I, I'm not saying we're gonna get Hydra. Yeah, we'll talk about what that could possibly mean in a minute. But it this is a very Hydra move to have the GRC be this humanitarian thing and they're not really doing anything they're really just putting these people in harm's way to cause or ramping them up or and actually them... causing yeah like yeah. the the flag smasher kind of group and they got lucky with super enhanced people yeah yeah it's a very hydra thing to do yeah it's a very hydra thing to do so that that them not explaining that kind of leaves that all open for somewhere down the line we could get some some form of yeah. old form of hydra hydra is still um around in the comics and just because they're gone inside the mc gone inside the mcu doesn't necessarily mean that yeah and i the hydra that we knew has been exposed but doesn't mean that right. there's not sleeper agents out there oh, somewhere well and all those they didn't get everybody there's no way they there's got no everybody way. they no got the people that they knew about but right. we were learning of hydra agents all over the place as the movies were going along like the senator guy yeah, yeah you know yeah. so gary shamling as gary hydra shamling. really <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean the fact that, that 
all of Hydra is gone. It's just that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Not... Um, we get the trial with John saying that you're gone, or whatever. Um, do I want to talk about that yet? I think I want to talk about that now. Um, after that, um, he walks out. Is it, so we have the the big exchange with him and the senator, uh, the senator who is the one. Uh, the GRC meeting who says, I have troops everywhere. We can just pull, yeah, pull the refugees out and force them into concentration camps or if right. not, it wasn't concentration camps, but that's kind of what they were kinda, making kinda it is. sound like what yeah. it was. Um, but the, um, but after that conflict in, in John getting demoted or retired, he, yeah, he was discharged, discharged without terms. Uh, it's a good of the service discharge, so you're not dishonorably discharged, but you're not honorably discharged. And you're not any then they made a point of you're it's not just, get Yeah. You don't get You go to, your way, we'll go our way and And you can't use your title, yeah, you can't you, you don't you get a pension, nothing. you get nothing. Yeah. So and John in that moment has a banging his fist on the on the podium and the senator guy keeps talking and John just walks out. Yeah. Like I'm done I'm done with this conversation. <laughs> um he's sitting on the bench outside with his wife, they actually explain the girl in the second episode who was their form and whatever. Yep. And it's his wife. And um, and he's kind of talking about, like, not, I don't, not, they made me. This is who I am. Well, yeah. how, how can I be anything other than what, I, what they made me? Right. And in that conversation, we get Valentina Allegra de, de sorry, Fant Fant Fantine. Ugh. A Contessa. Contessa. Uh, I was reading about Contessa because this is one of those random Marvel comic characters that is a big part of the comic, but we would never seen before. We've talked about this multiple times. We have not read the comics. We're coming from it from the movies and TVs and shows and stuff like that. So I was reading about her. She was an agent, a uh, uh, shield agent. She was a jet Italian jet setter. Um, hand to hand combat. She does all this really cool stuff. She has this story arc where she's um, dating Nick Fury in the comics. They live together. She feels kind of disconnected from him. So she starts uh, flirting with Steve. Um, uh, uh, not Sharon Carter. Um, uh, Agent Peg Carter. Peggy. Peggy Carter starts having. You know, having problems with it and stuff. So there's this big old long, you know, um, but in one of the versions of the comic, she becomes an, uh, a member of Hydra and becomes works her way through the hierarchy and becomes Madam Hydra. So she's like second in command. Um, there's a whole thing in there about, um, uh, Leviathan, um, this group, um, not quite Hydra, but more than eight than than Shield. There's also the Femme, Femme Fatales. She was the head of the Femme Fatales. Any of that, anyways. So she spends this time. Um, she kind of pushes John's wife out of the way. Sits down, has this conversation with John about I'm gonna need your talents, and the best thing you're ever gonna do is answer uh, is answer when I call. Yep. And uh and kind of leaves it open to you work for me now. That the Contessa is played by Julia Lu 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 ah! Julia Louise Dreyfus. Very close. I uh, got it on the <laughs> second try. I need more cocktails. Uh which is uh, okay. Amazing? <laughs> Yeah, they've been talking about this major character that's coming in this show in this episode, and if you were to listen to the bullshit on the internet, <laughs> it was Wolverine <laughs> because we got the Paradise Club and Madripoor, and he used to go right, there with the right, Hulk, and right. so so it's obviously got to be and. and and this is something that Star Wars fans do all the time, and they connect all these these red strings, right? And it's never the red strings. Yeah, exactly. And so, and so, but you don't have somebody like uh, Julia come in to play a character as a throwaway piece in one episode. Oh, yeah, of no. your TV show. Yeah, no, no, she's gonna be, she'll be back. 
I don't know when. I mean, obviously, I think my bet, let me get my red strings out. <laughs> my bet is she will be revealed as the power broker in the next episode's the last episode, the right? Next episode's the last episode. I think yes. she'll be revealed as the power broker in the next episode. I do not expect them to tie a bow on everything. Right. Just like they did with um, WandaVision. They're going to leave um, some stuff out there. And I mean, there is, if you think about it, there are a lot of ends that need to get tied up in, in one, one episode. episode yes. So I I think my bet is she will be revealed as a power broker, but we're not going to get an end to that part of the story mm -hmm. in this. Right, right. Um, I read a thing. I, it supposedly she's in black widow but black widow is supposed to have been out already right right so black widow was supposed to come out first right supposed to was supposed to come out first right and then stuff got delayed because of covid right and then and then this particular show got got pushed because they had to change a story arc yeah in in it and so the idea of having her show up there in what would be post um winter soldier right so mid 2000 2008 or maybe whatever maybe an end credit or a mid credit scene with her and Task, taskmaster taskmaster yeah, yeah yeah and then that leads them into trying to build the super soldier serum yeah in madripoor and all that stuff and that, that so you have the there's some because they yeah. changed some things. That yeah, and if they did it a mid-credit or post-credit scene, it's not enough that you're like, hey, that's out of order. If you end this right. without tying that off, you and you find out she is the power broker, and then you get that end credit scene with her and Taskmaster kind of hooking up. Yep, uh, yep. It, it ties together no matter which direction. And, and if they do something in there and they, you know, it, it's Marvel. So they'll take essences of what happens in the comics. And if she's sitting in an octopus throne or has an octopus pen or something like that. And in that scene, like I'm here to talk to you about the Hydra initiative, you yeah, know, that kind of thing. I, I don't know. I think that if they bring Hydra back, it's going to be, on the down low and kind of like i don't know that they're going to come back as hydra right they might gather the hydra people the, the together hydra people. and start something else i uh, uh i've been on the scroll kick everybody's a scroll right <laughs> um so i've been on the scroll kick so i wonder if that's that the the remnants of what is um hydra is what actually this is going to be the speculation episode apparently um uh uh the what's the remnants of hydra are, are know about the scrolls and they're trying to build an army to go against the scrolls and that's how we get secret wars it's a huge jump huge jump but there's been l bigger jumps with less information made <laughs> that were right so let's just go on. right um but but so you that was the major introduction character that we got in this episode that's obviously going to be something going forward um sam takes the shield and he goes to Isaiah Bradley. Right. So this scene, this section of the show, was Sam looking for answers of why he gave it up. That's how I see it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I could be wrong, but yeah. my point of view was Sam's fine. Bucky gave him the shield. You figure it out. This is yours. Yeah. Steve gave it to you. You take it. And now he realizes, okay, I need to figure out why I don't want it. Right. Or don't feel I deserve it uh, or whatever. Right. And I think a little bit of the, um, you know, uh, why I shouldn't take the serum, become enhanced, who who I am as Captain America, i.e. I'm a black man and what, what the American symbol means or doesn't mean to to black people in right, general, right. Um, which Isaiah, you know, kind of touches on that. Well, kind of more than touches on, you know, it's it, basically, it's not my 
America. It's yeah. their America. And yeah, I just, yeah. And I was... Uh, I just live here. <laughs> well, and, and, and Isaiah, like he said, I was like you. And I believed in the Stars and Stripes. Yeah. And then uh, I was... And then I came, you know, I was, you know, not put in prison, but was told I couldn't go save my friends because there was other people who had gotten the serum. Yeah. And they gotten trapped. And so he went and saved them. And then they came back and they eventually they all died off except for Isaiah. Yeah. And, he, and so and they, then they just experimented. They on just him. experimented on him for 30 years. And so he, of course he's bitter, but he's bitter because he, as a black man, in the 50s and 60s, he was never, ever, ever going to be the symbol of American freedom, which right. is what Captain America was in. I mean, he the first issue is him punching Hitler in the face of, right. of, the, of the comic. Right. And it's a white guy punching Hitler. And when you get finally get to the racial issues of the late 50s and 60s, where Isaiah would have been Captain America. Right. That was never going to happen. They were going to hide him away and make him not exist anymore. Yeah. But they still need to, needed him to be able to figure out why the serum worked for him and not for these others. Right. And that is heavy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. This was... is a comic book show. A, yeah. Like... No, this was definitely a, a heavier episode. There was... There, the, between that and then like the whole back half of the the whole back for the penultimate episode whatever i hate that word um mostly because he can't say it and that's part of it too um uh, but for the next to last episode episode like like there was one big fight scene and and set up for like sam becoming captain america yeah but it was very introspective very much like pointing out the truth your truth and trying to figure out what your truth is yep and, it, and that includes isaiah because his truth to him is the idea of captain america is this symbol of oppression that he has felt his entire life yeah and in and he says blonde hair blue eyed white boy is not gonna be me or you to in in no black man in their right mind would pick up that shield because of that symbolism right because then you're you're just a uh a, a toady an, you're an uncle tom is uh, what they used to call him yeah but you're also if it's also what isaiah is talking about is what john walker is he just happens to be white he's the poster child he's the the, right, the figurehead or whatever right. it is. Right, Steve was never. Steve was that, and then became his own person right. as he Captain America. Yeah, which is basically what the end of this is episode is about. Is Sam finally figuring out? Yeah. I need to, I need to figure out what I am. My own person being Captain America means to me. Yep, and how I'm gonna yeah. deal with it. Yeah, that. But that whole that whole scene was beautifully acted, beautifully shot. Uh, counter uh over the shoulder like camera action but also there was a couple times um where they're uh, they're facing each other obviously but one shot would be on isaiah and he'd be on the whole one side of the screen mm -hmm. and this whole empty space on the other side of the screen him talking into the void yeah and then the next shot would be sam more in the middle of the screen like absorbing the information like, yeah. it was just really well shot and stuff like that just visual i'm a cinematographer geek so so i love all that kind of stuff um and then we get the big sam goes home after his talk with isaiah wait you forgot a part zemo gets turned oh, over okay. to the so yeah so there's a shot from the trailer of zemo in front of the the sokovian monument uh, monument memorial we all knew at some point in time he needed to go home uh from the trailers or not like we he had to go home yeah. and, and and do it um he's there bucky shows up um zemo says i'm not gonna kill you i've decided not to kill you to bucky and and bucky pretty much saying we've decided to go a different way and pulls a gun on him yeah and pull actually physically pulls the trigger yep. and zemo is content like 
Right. But, well, he wanted to kill he, himself and, back in, in Civil, Civil War. War. Yeah. 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 But he was content and he just kind of looked at Bucky like, yeah, it's, of course it has to be you. Yeah. Like kind of yeah. and stuff. And he pulls the trigger and then no, nothing happens because it's empty and Bucky pours out all the guns, uh, all the bullets in his hand and the door melange show up. Yep. And Zemo just kind of like, well played. Hello, ladies. <laughs> you know, I just yep. love the whole hello, ladies thing. Yeah. And uh, and Ao says that they're going to go take him to the raft. Now, the raft shows up um, in Civil War. That's where yeah. all they're it's all the at. Big Pentagon. Floating island floating, prison, yeah, whatever. Prison thing. I think this leads to the Thunderbolts. Um and Zemo comes back later on, and all the bad guys team up and stuff like that. I think sure. that's where it goes. Yeah. Um, Put him in there with all the rest of the bad guys and let him conspire. It's not. It's it. They're all the bad guys together in one room so they can yeah. talk to each other, figure out <laughs> stuff. Is especially this level of bad guy. Like yeah. Zemo has plans upon plans upon plans. And oh, by the way, his superpower is he's rich. Right. So yeah. so he has all these things. So um, and then Bucky asks for a favor. Uh, from one last favor from the door of Melange. Yeah. They also tell him Don't come back for a while. Don't yeah, take it it take it's uh take some time to yourself. Um uh, because they're probably not happy that he did all this. Right. Uh, but ultimately it's probably for the best because then they get to take him and actually put him in a proper prison. Um which is gonna blow up in their face. Whatever. Um so Sam goes home. I'm going home. And he the reason he goes home for me, back to the conversation we we're having about Isaiah, uh, the, the for me is he needs to figure out who he is. Yes. And I think it's, he has both of these things going on, right? He's got the flag smashers and all of that stuff going on and, and, um, Zemo and Z Zemo and fake Captain America and whatever. Yeah. And nothing's really going out working out well over there. Right. And then he's got all this drama, well, not really drama, but drama at home, and it's not working out there either. Yeah. And so yeah. I think he's like, I gotta fix at least one of these right. things. Right. And I'm gonna go fix the goddamn boat. <laughs> this is the one I think I can do right now. Yeah. Plus he's got a little time on his hands. <laughs> he's got a little time on the hands because they they uh they they came in and pretty much pulled them off the case yeah and, the, and, uh, and and so bucky goes to scovia and yeah. sam goes home yeah isaiah and stuff yep. like that um he also gives up his wings to torres which i thought was because uh yeah. john walker tore the wings tore off up. and so he left them with torres and so we're going to get whatever torres i can't remember what he turns into um but we get 20 minutes of this episode of sam getting the okay from like like i'm going to fix the boat because it's the one thing i can do yeah and uh i'm gonna ask everybody to help us and yep. everybody comes and helps me and that shows it reminds me that i have faith in humanity right and and then bucky comes back and bucky and sam work on the boat together actually yep. bucky pulling like how are we gonna get this off like it's a new motor or whatever yeah in the back of the truck and they're like how are they gonna get this off the boat or off the back of the truck and bucky just picks it up yeah. and puts it down boop, boop. and puts a case on top of the truck and he said you need to sign for this and then i can go i had something made for you and that case is kind of the symbol at the end of the episode of him deciding to be himself right. as captain america right we don't see the the outfit but right we, they we, stop they cut it right we, I, we, I need to see what's on yeah we, we i i we i i know what the comic version of yeah. that outfit looks yeah. like and so i'm i know that's where we're going but yeah. still it's one of yeah. those things um but see. we get um we get sam and bucky um building their relationship um we get becoming bucky, bffs and they become bffs and i actually love the fact that they actually point out we had just we we're just we're we're coworkers. We're not friends. We're not even best friends. <laughs> we're just friends. We had a common friend, and so we happen to know each other. And like, no, like oh, you're, you're BFFs. You're now. BFFs. Um, uh, Bucky flirting with Sarah was awesome. <laughs> um, Sam, like, I'm not allowed to flirt with my sister. It was awesome. That was so good. Um, the big thing that came out of this, um, at least from my point of view, is. Bucky finally convinces Sam, like, it's your responsibility to take the shield. And in 
so Sam starts to try to throw the shield. Yep. The physical representation of throwing the shield is something that that Captain America Captain America does. And so Sam tries to do it without the Super Soldier Serum. I got most of Super it. Super Soldier Serum. Um and he's throwing it and for the most part Bucky's catching it. Right. Because he's got the serum, he's got the metal arm and stuff yep. like that. But they're playing catch. Yes. With the Captain America shield. Right. Having an in-depth philosophical conversation about what it means to be a yourself and be the symbol of freedom and oppression and all of this other stuff and them going back and forth about should I do it as a black man? Should I not do it as a black man? Right. It doesn't matter. Steve, Steve did it. Didn't care. It didn't matter to Steve, like what color you were when Steve and I, what Bucky was saying, when Steve and I decided to give it to you, what do you even think about the black thing? We right. just picked the best person right. because you are the best. But he's person. kind of acknowledging that maybe we should have. Right. But, but you're talking to two guys from the forties. Right. Who have no clue. Really the social. What it's like. What today. it's like today. Yeah. Right. Um, one was on ice for 70 years and one was on ice on and off for 70 years. Right. And then one was blipped. So, so they're, they're like, even Bucky has said it multiple times, like, uh, I'm socially awkward, you know, yeah. cause I'm <laughs> 106 years old yeah. and I don't, uh, <laughs> I like swing music and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Marvin Gaye conversation, <laughs> uh, Marvin Gaye yeah. that, that yeah. they had last time, yep. last week was, was. A great example of that, but also just they're just having a conversation about music on a plane. Um, but the the conversation that Sam and Bucky have comes down to Bucky is told by Sam, "If you want to get rid of those demons, you have to make you have to do closure with those that you affected, not we not avenge all the things you did." But actual like closure, right? And not talking. just going up to somebody and saying sorry and then walking off. Right. You, you have to actually do. But I, he said to him, you know, I bet there's at least one person on that list who basically you have information that would help give them closure. Yes, and and you're the only piece of person that knows that. And he said, well, there's a couple. Yeah. So that's something. Just, just start with one, which yeah, I thought was a nice was like, line to start too. with. You know, start yeah. small. Kind of the. A a step approach, right? Uh, but um, also the PTSD, like he, like yeah, Sam, because Sam worked with with, with, with ex soldiers, yeah, yeah. so he understands. Like the first thing you need to do is just say, just save one, just steal the Batman line, just right. save one, right? And then you'll know what to do from there. And right. I, I love that. This is supposed to be the big flashy action packed whatever show, and we're getting that, but we're also getting the dealing with post-traumatic stress right. syndrome so the last one was about grief and this one is about a being black in america and b or a, a... point one <laughs> <laughs> post-traumatic stress yeah yeah and and it, it also goes with sam too because sam's trying to figure out at the start of this season like where his place is that's why he gives the shield up because yeah. he doesn't feel like he's worthy of it but he also doesn't know who he is yeah. outside of being in cap sh in cap shadow right. and so like all of that is that so that's just an amazing scene we get one last scene of carly and the flag smashers talking about uh, we had a previous scene sorry with sharon carter in madripoor um where she's on the phone and she offers a job to um uh bat rock um you could hear the french through the phone yeah um who was the one from from uh winter soldier the start of winter soldier right. so and he, he was, was on in the plane the, in the in the first, first episode, episode and stuff right. like that so he got to come back uh george st pierre the actual actor uh former ufc guy it's just awesome seeing him in a movie right. with the cauliflower ear just all just like just all there all in the um uh sharon made a phone call it was him they're, we're in New York at the end of the episode. Carly is talking about, you know, we we actually need to do something. It's, it's Now is the time. We need to make a massive decision. While that's all going on, Sam's getting a phone call from Torres about 
all these pings were showing up in Europe and the latest ping is in New York. And then Sam turns to the TV and they're talking about the GRC um, vote right. in New York. Right. And so it comes in like, you know, again with the red thread. Do, 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 do. Well, yep. Carly's in the in the middle of – it's not Central Park. But no, it's a, it's a smaller It's a smaller park because you can see Empire in, in the background. Yeah. And um and and Bat Rock shows up with a case full of bombs, bombs explosions, right? So whatever. Which means Sharon's working with the Flag Smashers. Uh, I, or, or she's, she's working just... against them, and she hired him to go give them a bunch of duds. Well, and he and he says when he shows up to Carly, "I'm only here for Falcon." Right. And so she sh- hires him Sharon to go knows, get Falcon? like right. So what's so, going on there? <laughs> or you got all kinds of like different like things that are going on with all of that stuff. And I just I just don't know like where like like back to the What cop- side is Sharon Carter on? What <laughs> what side is anybody on right. outside of Sam and Bucky at this point in time? Because right. even Zemo was like Yeah. I think you're on our the good guy side. Um they make a point of showing the the meeting of the GRC and this um, white lit round table of room of doom. And they're all arguing about, should we vote? Should we move everybody? Whatever. And everybody who was in the park who got activated, quote unquote, Mm -hmm. is now security inside where this meeting is. And they shut the system down. Um, And uh, the whole room goes red. Uh, and then they show Sam opening the case and then roll the black. Yeah. And there's, um, one of the things that they kind of made a point of there, each of the individuals that's sitting at the table, each of the members of the GRC, um, has a camera on them. And so when they talk, it displays it so that everybody else at the table, cause the table is gigantic right. so that they can look at the screen instead of. Way, way over the there table and there's like and... there's like some kind of pyramid of monitors in the middle too so it was kind of uh, weird yeah. yeah so there but there's a big monitor or a big bunch of monitors together and in, in tied into one and when it all goes to red that screen like fragments like you're about to receive a message uh, from uh, somebody uh, uh, yeah but yeah. we and there's there. some red stuff in there that could be the beginning of the flag smasher's hand coming like right. through but there's nothing it, it, it never materializes, it never materializes. So we don't know what that was and the security all hold everybody at the desks like yeah. they made a point of showing that yeah. too um we get a med credit scene in this episode too and it's john walker um doing the worst well job i've ever seen but he's I building know, clop, big clops uh, big clops he doesn't care uh but he is making his own america captain america shield non-vibranium right it's probably titanium but he is so far gone off the rails that he feels like he, i am captain america like yeah. i and that i was the one that was chosen i'm captain america yeah. and so he has to build this symbol yeah and it's he's, he's missing the point He's totally missing. The oh point. yeah, absolutely. But um, I, I in the next episode because the last, next episode's the last episode. I feel like I think I feel like John's gonna die. Like I I feel like you have to you either have to put him you either have to put him um in the prison with Zemo or you have to kill him. Yeah, the, the way he is yeah. mentally, you, you like you just the raft. I said it earlier and I couldn't remember what it's called. The raft, yeah. Um I Yeah. I wonder what they're gonna do. Just thinking about it, like are they gonna give him some does he get to pull some heroic, you know I it would be cool if he comes in and is the one that saves Cap Falcon, Falcon Cap, Falcon America, whatever they're gonna call him. Like like May- he's maybe I just, I'm I'm, I'm working through it, like, how I would feel about that, like, because it's so cliche and kind of wraps up his bad actings in a nice little, yeah, yeah, clean bow. I I like him going, I like him going to prison more than I do like him dying. Like, I like him going to prison. Yeah. 
they could, put him on the raft and then him and Zemo get him to and find Zemo each other. and they get together <laughs> and all that all, all kind of hell break loose uh <laughs> because Zemo is not afraid to use uh uh enhanced people yeah to get his ends yeah he he's did it. just not gonna be enhanced himself he's just not gonna be enhanced himself right um but um we got the last episode um there's gonna be poo going on in new york uh it's i'm gonna say it this is really that's bad it's nice that the final conflict is gonna be in the states because the states and the idea of captain america and this oversight committee and all this stuff that goes on is very American politics. Yeah. And so it's nice that this final, this final, this final, I'm using the Cody figures a lot tonight. The list, this is going to be on American, you know, on American soil. Yeah. Like I, cause it's been in Europe a lot of the show. Yeah. And so, and, and they're Which is just fine. I mean, it's, this is a world problem. It's a world problem, not, but it's America. It's a world problem that is being controlled by the American, industrial right. machine political right. machine political yeah that kind of thing captain america yeah yeah so um but yeah and then we have all kinds of stuff whatever and who is the power broker sharon i i don't think so but whatever so let us know what you thought anything else i'm sure we forgot something oh, there's there's tons but yeah uh, that, that, i think we hit all the major points <laughs> We hit all the major points, I guess. <laughs> Let us know what you thought of uh, this episode of the Falcon and Winter Soldier uh, called Truth uh, and our reaction to it in the comments down below. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. Follow us on all the social media networks, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs> and, uh, down in the description, I need a cocktail. And until the next time, cult members, good afternoon, good evening, and good night now. Oh, <laughs>